in our Dear Lord, we want to thank you for all the freedom that we have. We ask you to give us the guidance to make the right decisions for Spotsylvania County. We ask you to keep all of us safe. Military women and men, please keep them out of harm's way. We ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. And Mr. Taylor, we have a bulletin yeah. item. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. First item is the approval of your agenda, and there is a bullpen item, which is the addition of a budget adjustment and appropriation for two months funding for the Mall Satellite Library, uh, capital costs and operational costs for FY18. Okay. We have a motion to approve the agenda. Yeah. Approval of the agenda, uh, Mr. Skinner. Uh, motion, uh, Mr. Yakabaski. Aye. Mr. McLaughlin? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Skinner? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Dr. Trampy? Aye. Chairs, aye. Mr. Chairman, that brings us to public presentations. Amy, has anyone signed up to speak? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'd run through the guidelines for public presentations. Briefly, public presentations are an opportunity for citizens to present matters you believe deserve the board's attention. <coughs> These presentations are not part of a public hearing. Sign up for public hearings. Uh, are each separate. Public presentations are one-way comments from citizens to the Board of Supervisors. This is not a forum for dialogue or debate. So to make a public presentation, please sign up on the public presentation sign-up sheet and please print clearly for our record. Come to the lectern when your name is called. Clearly state your name and voting district for our record. Address your comments directly to the Board. And state whether you're speaking on your own behalf, in which case you'll have three minutes to speak are speaking on behalf of a recognized group, in which case you'll have five minutes to speak. You'll notice the light panel on the podium. The uh, light turns green for you to speak, yellow when you have 30 seconds to sum up, and when the light turns red, your time has expired and the microphone will be turned off. Public presentations shall not be used to address matters that have been the subject of public hearings or to make political campaign speeches, private advertisements, or personal attacks. And your written comments are always welcomed by the Board of Supervisors. Amy, who is signed up first? The first speaker is Russ Mueller, followed by Dave Hammond. For a group. Good evening. My name is Russ Mueller, and I live at Fawn Lake. And tonight, our concerned citizens of Fawn Lake and Spotsy County have several urgent requests related to the special use permit for the potentially harmful S Power Mega Solar Power Plant. It's extraordinary, precedent setting, not only for Spotsy County, but for Virginia and the East Coast. Because time ran out last time, uh, I'm going to start with the conclusions. For reasons of deficiency and harm, we're asking the board to reject the pending solar application if that's procedurally possible, and at a minimum, place a hold on any and all sol solar applications starting immediately. Alternative is to rush ahead with all the facts in hand. This is not Walmart coming in, not even 300 Walmarts coming in, 50 feet from our doorsteps. This is the world 12th largest, Virginia, and the U.S. is fifth largest and it screams for close scrutiny. You can count us to pledge our efforts to work with you towards the best outcome for all. Given the extraordinary size and challenges this project presents, we believe the county citizens can only be protected from harm if one, if the special use permit contains specific mitigation conditions we've provided to the board and the rest of the staff and the county, and if S power is required to be begin anew and submit up front more detailed engineering plans designed to avoid severe risk. That being said, we support the county in this difficult process. Improvements to the county code that will be more protective of citizens' property and environment would be a good first step after the solely permitted process is placed on hold. 
then due diligence can be undertaken, the need for further protections against serious <laughs> harm can be thoroughly studied and mitigation identified. During this period, counties should have performed an independent cost-benefit analysis, which a mega project like this has deserved from the very start. As a respondent to the State Corporation Commission, I explained the enormity of this project and its risks to virtually every state and county agency that put eyes on the project at a recent VMI environmental symposium, including DEQ, DGIF, Army Corps of Engineers. As quoted in a Microsoft news release, Governor Northam said that this supersized Microsoft S-Power project is a win-win. To the entire audience of state and county officials, my response was, this can only be true if thousands of Virginia residents do not lose their wells and drinking water. This can only be true if, become, if burning is prohibited in the tons of cutover to prevent serious health conditions for hundreds of seniors and children. This can only be true if our lake, ponds, and streams are not polluted from tons of muddy sludge like in Essex County and toxic chemicals. And this can only be true of 6,350 acres, almost 2.5% of the land mass here in the county, does not become Virginia's largest waste dump. After stating these concerns, the response I got from the Virginia Secretary of Natural Resources, Matt Strickler, was, well, we don't want that to happen either. Well, I hope that all officials, all who have a say in this project, can say the same exact thing. We don't want this to, to happen either. Now, <clears throat> lastly, we see the board will discuss forming a committee on alternative energy, and this could, if given appropriate and meaningful duties, assist the board in performing due diligence on the S Power project. We can support it, but only if it gives citizens an opportunity to report on the scope and extent of risks that large solar energy complexes present to the county and the potential dangers of this S Power facility. We believe placing a hold on the permitting process, seeking citizen input, as has occurred in other counties. Sir, your time has expired. Dave Hammond, followed by Lou Sherman. Hello, good evening. My name is Dave Hammond. I live in the Livingston District. I have provided you with a, a written copy of my comments. The last Board of Supervisors meeting two weeks ago, a large group of my fellow concerned citizens expressed their serious concerns with the proposed 6,000-acre, 500-megawatt, mega-sized solar power plant that has been pro proposed in the western part of the county. This would be over four times larger than the largest solar facility east of the Mississippi, and the first in the U.S. that is not in a desert climate. You heard from over 20 speakers with standing room only audience and numerous other concerned citizens watching online. We also watched the board's discussions later in the hearing about the comprehensive plan amendment and the concerns expressed about the, this project size. We know that the Board of Supervisors, the Planning Commission, and the county staff are all aware of our concerns and that, that we have been bringing to your attention since February. You have a very difficult job in reviewing an application for a facility that has never been proposed or envisioned in Spotsylvania County. We encourage a deliberate, detailed, and open process with a premise to require the applicant to fully detail the potential risks and impacts and provide mitigations to the county. We encourage you to take whatever time is needed as this process proceeds. Tonight we have three key messages and three calls to action. Number one, take immediate action to deny the S-Power SUP applications. Number two, place all current 
and future applications on an indefinite hold. And number three, we support forming a citizen committee to help the county do the work needed to develop clear policies, guidelines, and regulations for solar power plants. You'll hear from subsequent speakers that will be discussing each of these action items in more detail. We've raised a lot of issues that need to be carefully addressed. Our messages tonight are directed towards focusing attention on developing the clear policies, guidelines, and regulations that are needed for the solar power plants. We need to proceed carefully and get this 100% right the first time. Thank you for your service to the county and all of its residents. Lou Sherman, followed by Dan Kulig. Good evening. My name is Lou Sherman, and I live in the Livingston District, and I'm uh, speaking for myself. We call for the Spotsylvania Board of Supervisors to immediately place on hold the three applications of S-Power to build a 500-megawatt solar power plant in Spotsylvania County. It should be very clear to all concerned that this project, as proposed, is not viable. The recent GEO SEER report clearly states that, quote, the local aquifer is not robust enough to sustain industrial taps in quantity to supply water to a solar power plant uh, of the proposed magnitude, end quote. Therefore, the water cannot be supplied by wells, as specified in S. Power's uh, application. Further, it's also doubtful that trucking in water is a viable option. A semi-sized tanker holds about 9,000 gallons. Supplying 308 million gallons of water during the 18-month construction period will require over 34,000 tanker truck loads. They need almost a million gallons a day for each workday during construction. I repeat, trucking in water is not viable, not feasible. We were told about three weeks ago that S. Power was conducting a hydrology study and that the results would be available at this time. Now we're being told that the study will take another four weeks. S. Power has a big problem. They know it, and they seem to be trying to delay the inevitable. The county does not have to wait for S. Power's hydrology study. The GEOSEER report provides a compelling reason to immediately deny or put place on hold the applications. If not already being done, I urge the county to have your GIS experts review the GEOSEER report and validate or refute its conclusions. These applications are wasting all of our time. S Power clearly does not have a viable project plan, and they would be required to reapply in the future when they develop one, or they should be required to apply in the future. In addition, I support forming a citizens committee of alter, uh, on alternative energy. The citizen committee will provide additional manpower to help you and the county staff develop clear policies guidelines and regulations that are needed before the first solar plant project is approved. This will require a huge amount of work and everyone's focus should be shifted to this important activity. I thank you for your dedication of time and work uh, on behalf of the residents of Spotsylvania County. Dan Kulik followed by Kevin McCarthy. Mr. Chairman and Supervisors, my name is Dan Kulig. I live in the Livingston District. I have provided a copy of these, of my remarks for the record. As you all have already heard from Mr. Sherman, the project cannot be executed as submitted. You have been briefed on the GeoShear report that concludes that the local aquifer will not support water usage proposed by the S Power application. You have also been shown that the trucking in surface water of the volume required is also not feasible. Based on the conclusions of the GeoSure report, the proposed water usage has the potential of severely depleting the drinking water supply of the surrounding homeowners should this development go forward as currently defined. This puts the health and welfare of your constituents at risk. Should you receive a hydrology report from S Power in a month or so, as, as Lou mentioned, regardless of its findings, you will still have one report 
in hand that identifies the potential of damaging the drinking water supply of your constituents. The health and welfare of your constituents will still be at risk. Not until a major change to the applicant's construction process that does not violate the stability of the local aquifer is submitted to you are you free from the threat to the water supply of your constituents. Any update correcting the water issue will require major changes to the application as well as most likely require significant changes to other components of the application. State agencies involved in the original SCC process will most likely require additional re-reviews of the modified application materials. This now appears to be a new application. Because the application was as written presents a direct danger to the health and welfare of your constituents, and because major changes to the engineering process are required but have not yet been proposed, I request that the board deny the application as written. The applicant should be directed to resubmit once a viable plan that has been developed does not put your constituents at risk. Thank you. Kevin McCarthy, followed by Bill McGrath. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Kevin McCarthy. My wife and I reside in the Livingston District. I've provided you with a written copy of my comments for the record. Earlier this month, along with many others, I addressed both the Planning Commission and this Board of Supervisors raising concern about the need for due, due diligence with regard to the proposed S-Power facility. Tonight, I want to express my strong support for the formation of a Citizens Committee on Alternative Energy. As you've heard and will continue to hear, a number of very serious concerns over the proposed uh, solar power S-Power project have been raised over the past few months. Many hours have already been invested by a number of citizens trying to understand the potential impact of this massive project. Much more work is needed before Spotsylvania County will be prepared to move forward with our first industrial scale solar power plant. The proposed citizen committee would provide additional resources to help the board, the planning commission, and the county staff to develop clear policies, guidelines, and regulations that are needed before the first project is approved. We recommend that this citizen uh, committee be established as a working committee that advises the Board of Supervisors and staff rather than as, than as an advisory committee that loads the staff up with additional work. In other words, the citizens of Spotsylvania County who have a serious and vested interest in this and other similar projects are willing and able to step up and assist with the research that is required to make informed decisions regarding the S-Power project specifically and alternative energy, gener energy programs generally. To be helpful and effective, we believe this new citizens committee should be prepared uh, to be empowered to perform meaningful duties and develop specific recommendations to the Planning Commission and to the Board. It should initially focus on utility scale solar power facilities given the imminence of the S-Power application. Other forms of alternative energy could be explored later. It should be permitted to travel to other locations in the region to obtain critical first-hand knowledge and to speak with those who have had experience particularly in solar. It should be comprised of members carefully selected so that they bring a range of experience and expertise. It should be empowered to bring in experts on selected issues. And there should be expectations set for the committee members, such as committing to doing a, a portion of the large amount of work that's going to be required and to spend some specified amount of time per week on the issues. It's critical that we learn from the experience of others, and that will take time and effort. While others may wish to act in haste, there's no reason for Spotsylvania County should be in a rush to build anything. We need to take whatever time is needed to develop clear policies, guidelines, and regulations, and then to ensure that we have the means and the resources to enforce them. Finally, I support the request made tonight for, uh, to the board to deny the S-Power applications immediately and to place all applications for solar facilities on an indefinite hold until the county first establishes its guidelines in this area. Given what you've heard this evening and others have also expressed, S-Power clearly does not have a viable project plan and they should be required to reapply when and if. Sir, your time has expired. Sorry. Bill McGrath, followed by Richard Janow. Good evening, my name is Bill McGrath and I'm from the Livingston District. I've provided a copy of my comments. Um, by way of background, I've been on the Environmental Commission in Mount Olive, New Jersey and Washington Township, New Jersey. 
In addition, uh, Governor Kane of the state of New Jersey appointed me to the Low-Level Radioactive Waste Siting Commission a number of years ago. That was a lot of fun. Uh, that commission was made up of a board and advisory committee as well, and I wanted to talk about how useful an advisory committee can be to boards like yours. Um, so I can't emphasize enough the importance of collecting accurate information. That's very, very critical. Um, some of that can be done with internet searches and phone calls, but a critical step is visiting several sites or locations that have similar applicate, you know, similar activities to what you're considering right now as well. And there are a number of those that can be visited. A Citizens Advisory Committee could help you with that by going to sites, making contact, and discussing that with the folks that have experience in this area ahead of us. And I've listed a couple of here. Essex County, we need to see what caused the severe muddy runoff problems. In Southampton, home of the largest solar power plant in Virginia, Dominion State uh, started this 100 megawatt facility up last December, supply power to Amazon. Curry County, North Carolina, home to the largest solar power plant in the East Coast, which began operating just a month ago. Curry County imposed a ban on further projects a year ago while the facility was being built. The ban is still in place today. I understand that the county had regulations for solar facilities, which were revised several times as they went along. Um, they built a 20 megawatt facility followed by a 120 megawatt facility. We need to learn from their experience. Uh, in addition, there are uh, probably several locations that have been open for a number of years now. Uh, what's been their experience over that period of time? Are there any unex uh, unex things, things that have gone wrong or things that have gone right that you need to know about before you make a decision? It's critical that we learn from the experience of others, and that takes time and effort. Spotsylvania should take whatever time is needed to develop clear <laughs> policies, guidelines, and regulations. Finally, I support the request that you're hearing tonight. Take action to deny S power application immediately. They clearly don't have a viable project plan in place right now, and they should be encouraged to reapply if they develop a viable plan in the future. It's critical to start focusing on preparing the county for a potentially viable solar power project that we all can live with. Thanks for your time, thanks for your service, and thank you for listening. Richard Janow, followed by Dr. Yvonne Athanasol. Good evening, I'm Richard Janelle. I live at 12,000 Fawn Lake Parkway in Spotsylvania. I'm gonna talk about uh, one of the health risks associated with the uh, solar power facility. Land application of biosolids to fertilize and amend the soil at the proposed solar power facility sites must be prohibited. Although not specifically mentioned in the application, um, use of biosolids and the intent to use them should be anticipated. The reason for that is biosolids are truly effective amendments for poor and acidic soils are readily available and generally free for the taking. However, biosolids are sewage sludge. The waste treatment process does not kill the pathogens in the sludge, nor does it break down all the chemicals, toxic heavy metals, and legal and illegal drugs prevalent in human waste. The EPA January 2009 targeted National Sewage Sludge Survey found biosolids made from sewage sludge contain more than 100 toxins. Research by the EPA, the CDC, and Virginia Tech Department of Crop and Soil Environmental Sciences found that Class B biosolids contain various bacteria, viruses, and highly toxic chemicals. Some of these pathogens are, pathogens are designated as superbugs that are resistant to antibiotics and frequently resistant or immune to disinfection. The bacteria and viruses in biosolids are a health concern for everyone but a very serious risk for young children, pregnant women, people over 60, and those who have, uh, immunocom are immunocompromised. There are various ways that uh, these things can travel off-site. One is by air. As they're applied, some of the, the material become aerosolized, including viruses and um, bacteria. A um, Virus is only three microns in size, a bacteria 10 microns, and they don't readily settle out of the air. And winds can uh, propel them up to 15 miles away or further from uh, the origination site. Insects, fowl, rodents, deer, domestic animals, rabbits and foxes, and other small animals will track through the biosolids and move them to places outside the application zone into neighborhoods that surround the site, including uh, Fawn Lake and others. Birds and waterfowl that forage biosolids areas will transfer harmful bacteria 
and viruses and other materials into lakes, ponds, rivers, and streams. Flies, mosquitoes, and ticks are other sources of infection. A single fly can carry thousands of bacteria for weeks. A female fly lays 100 to 150 eggs every 12 hours and lives for 30 days. The eggs and hatch flies contain the same bacteria as the female. Flies laying eggs over 4,000 of biosolids will increase the number of bacteria-laden flies in the area exponentially. The exact number cannot be known, but will likely total in the millions. When flies increase in number, they travel further afield, spreading bacteria further and further from the site where they are hatched. Since there's no mention in... Doctor, I'm sorry, but your time is up, sir. Doctor, <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Yvonne Euthanasol, followed by Judith Janelle. Good evening, everyone. I appreciate the fact that you, you're, you're opening this up for us to um, let you know how we feel and... I don't have, as you can tell, I don't, have anything, I don't have anything prepared, but I just wanted to let you know. Do you state your name? Oh, um, it's y Dr. Yvonne Athanasaw. I live in Fawn Lake. Thank you. Um, my husband and I moved from Northern Virginia four, four years ago, and we built a home in Fawn Lake. And the reason we picked that location was because it was, it was a beautiful, peaceful location, a lot of wildlife. We, we just love it. We absolutely love it. And now we're absolutely concerned with what may be transpiring for us and this in Spotsylvania not just not just us but the county itself and I really believe that we should have this citizens advisory group um, I I have learned to do a lot of research myself through my doctoral program and um, I can tell you that it's it's so important that you that we get the facts and understand what's really going to happen. Um, when as power came to Fawn Lake and they talked to us, um, one of the things that I asked was just a simple question. I said, you know, we have a lot of migratory birds coming in and out of this out of Fawn Lake, uh, lots of them. I said, how's that going to impact the birds? They didn't have an answer. They said, well, we're, we're looking into that. So what I'm saying right now is they really don't have all the answers. And, you know, I, let's face it, it comes down to dollars. And we really need to be careful that we don't see the dollars over, the, over what, how, how our citizenry is going to be impacted and, our, and our, the nature that we come to love in Spotsylvania. So I just wanted to... You know, let you know from just you know, just an average citizen that we do have concerns. We do love it here in Spotsylvania, and we really hate to see something like this happen that could destroy a lot of, a lot of nature and impact us physically as well. So, thank you, Judith Janelle, followed by Alma Buckley. Okay, I'm kind of finishing up. I'm Judith Janelle in Fawn Lake Parkway. I'm finishing up a bit of where my husband was on biosolids. They're frequently used to amend the soil and to be used as fertilizer to get the vegetation to grow. And we were trying to explain to you the uh, problems with them. Also, the vi because of the slope of the, the uh, area of the S Power project, they would horribly contaminate the water shed of the York River watershed. And Raleigh, North Carolina had problems with that. And the, they contaminated the Noose River with biosolids. And it is a nightmare that is ongoing because there was a potable water supply from municipalities downriver, as is the York watershed. So I'm moving on to the, uh, de the control burn in Site A of the proposed solar facility is a vast 5,000-acre flammable debris field that extends up to the 1.5-mile border with Fawn Lake and several other residential areas around the periphery. 
The debris is composed of thousands of tons of dead felled trees, stumps, branches, brush, leaves, and pine needles. Open burning of the magnitude required to reduce such a huge amount of debris will go on for weeks, if not months. The intense heat from the fires will propel huge clouds of smoke, ash, soot, embers into the atmosphere, and it will disperse and fall back to the surface on residences, schools, playgrounds, parks, daycare centers, athletic fields, and so forth. We note that the atmospheric temperature inversions, not an uncommon phenomenon in the area, are known to trap concentrated smoke and ash clouds near ground level. Since there are residential areas all around the site, this will have in health impacts regardless of the wind direction. Can you picture the headline? One dead, 50 hospitalized from smoke inhalation. Can you be sure it won't happen? Do we want to take the risk? We need an ordinance restricting massive scale open burning. This type of open burning should not be treated the same as open burning on a farm field that, has, that just goes on for a few hours a day. Getting back to the risks from the mosquito-borne diseases, that also must be mitigated. And I had talked to you before about the mosquitoes breeding in drainage ditches and retention ponds and the risk of that. They need to be aerated. They need to be chemically treated. The problem comes if they overflow from rain, then they're going down into the watershed and the chemicals are not compatible with potable water. Uh, now, wetlands are different than the drainage retention ponds. Wetlands tend to have uh, birds, frogs, and fish, and minnows that eat mosquito larvae. You don't have that in the retention ponds. Um, even so, Purdue University recommends that the uh, wetlands be as far away from residences because of the risk of mosquito-borne illness. Ma'am, I'm sorry, but your time has expired. Thank you. Alma Buckley. Followed by Kim Evans. Um, my name is Alma Buckley, and um, my voting district is Chancellor. Um, I have been married to uh, a Navy Captain John Buckley for the past 23 years. Um, we have nine children. The oldest is 22, and the youngest is two. Our youngest uh, was removed from our custody at 10 months of age amidst a serious medical condition. His name is Juan Antonio. Today, we still have no definite diagnosis for him. He has been labeled as IPEX-like, meaning he, dis he demonstrates all the symptoms, but genetic testing keeps coming back saying he does not have the full genetic disorder. Um, Juan Antonio was removed after an extensive surgery, which my husband and I signed off on. I want you to know that every step of the way, my husband and I have wanted nothing but was best for our son. Uh, I assured the CPS investigator that my son was safe, that he was getting the medical care he needed at Walter Reed Military <coughs> National Military Medical Center, and he couldn't be any safer than at a federal hospital. A safety plan was presented to my husband and I. We asked to be given a day to have our lawyer look it over. Um, a written and verbal agreement was made between I and the CPS investigator, but Lorraine Hall, CPS investigator, had me escorted out of the hospital that very night, and the safety plan was no longer an option. My infant <coughs> was left in a cold, strange hospital no family, no friends were allowed to visit, get any medical updates for weeks. DSS has no compassion. Their motto of doing what is in the best interest of the child was clearly not evident. Doctors at Walter Reed requested and wrote to DSS that they allow us to come and see him <coughs> more often because our visited, visits pr uh, promoted his well-being. It increased his recuperation, but DSS denied the request. DSS has misjudged the situation. My husband and I faced criminal charges. They were dismissed early on. The judge clearly saw the truth that we love our son and have tried to do everything we can to demonstrate that DSS does not see the truth. There is no future reunification with our son. He is to be placed with a relative who will eventually adopt him. 
He has been gone for 16 months. I have eight other children at home. We go every week to the DSS building to visit him. We are supervised. Don't tell me they do not see a loving mother who has raised other kids. Currently, I face the worst possible administrative finding at the end of May. And what I am asking you is to check on DSS. What they're doing is wrong. Their motto. Ma'am, I apologize, but your time is up. Kim Evans, followed by Nancy McNamara. My name is Kim Evans, and I'm in the Lee Hill District. Um, I'm a friend of the Buckleys. I know them from church. I practice in the field of social work, and I'm a child and family therapist. I am here today to request help on the behalf of the Buckley family. For lack of a better word, this whole situation is bizarre, absolutely bizarre. In order to make sure I still understood the overall mission of the social services that I worked in years ago, I looked up the mission of Spotsylvania <coughs> Department of Social Services on their website. It says, people helping people triumph over poverty, abuse, and neglect to shape strong futures for themselves, their families, and communities. Their vision states a commonwealth in which individuals and families have access to adequate, affordable, high-quality human and social services that enable them to be the best they can. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a disconnect with this mission of DSS in the Buckley family. Something has gone very wrong. I believe the social workers initially involved in this case acted on behalf of Juan. They responded to a doctor's call. Unfortunately, the doctor had no background information on Juan or his prior medical care. Those involved failed to see the big picture. They failed to act on behalf of Juan and his family. There's been a breakdown in the system. DSS has moved to terminate the parental rights of John and Alma with ev without ever attempting to come alongside them to work through this crisis. There has been unfounded accusations and conflict. DDA DSS has failed to a significant part of their mission. Juan did need medical care. He ended up in the hospital not because he was abandoned on the side of the road in a trash can or left in a car, but because his mother drove him to the hospital. She did not neglect him. She consulted with many doctors over a long period of time. Should she have taken him sooner at that time? Maybe. Hindsight is usually 2020. I trust that DSS had concerns. Sick babies are a concern to us all. I also believe that they assumed the worst. They failed to gather all the facts, which then created an antagonistic relationship between DSS and the Buckley family. The individuals working on this case have lost sight in the mission and vision of DSS. The Buckley family was and is in crisis. They are experiencing pain, fear, and anguish that is consuming with no help. There is nothing the Buckleys can do or say to have DSS help them. They have been deemed worthless, unfit parents, unable to ever care for Juan, yet all the other children remain safely in the home. When I was at a meeting for Juan, I asked the room full of social workers what the Buckleys needed to do in order to get past this conflictual relationship in order to work with them to reunite the family. I got nothing, blank stares, uncomfortable body language as I pressed for direction. No one was willing to say anything except talk to your lawyer. They are advocating that Alma and John's little boy be stripped from them forever. They are advocating Juan to be adopted. Record sealed. Case closed. That is terrible. Ma'am, I apologize, but your time is up. Nancy McNamara, <coughs> followed by Alfred King. Good evening. I'm Dr. Nancy McNamara. I live in Livingston. I favor the idea of a new citizens committee on alternative energy before any action is taken on the S-Power special use permit application for solar factories in Spotsylvania. All current and future applications should be on hold for review by this committee. The only research presented to the citizens so far has been uh, from the viewpoint of the applicant. A business would need to profit from solar use of agricultural or rural land. The burden of studying the environmental consequences of the approval needs to be shared by those who will experience any negative consequence. Current citizen efforts 
have revealed serious consequences at other solar locations. Common sense would advise a red light at this point. For example, why does the solar industry generally not want to own the land for these factories? Well, apparently, S Power does plan to buy in this instance, but business generally benefits from the tax credits. After about 30 years of intermittent solar power use, because sun is only available at certain hours and less so in certain regions, they leave a waste land where nothing will grow and toxicity may even be a concern. At that point, how will power be provided after decommission takes place? Is this good environmental policy? My research guide is Dr. Herbert Eckerlin, Professor Emeritus at the University of North Carolina, who appreciates alternative forms of energy and has built a solar home at the campus at his university. He provides independent research. A concerned citizen committee can find consultants of this quality to avoid precipitous action. An independent committee can also assist in locating an attorney and reminding the county of the historic values which have given strength to our nation. These were prominent in previous comprehensive plans. Is there a subliminal urge for political correctness which requires that we ignore values of the past? Tourists will arrive and still arrive to visit our area. Has anyone asked, any tourist asked, to see solar panels? Thank you for considering my remarks. Alfred King, followed by Irv Boyles. Alfred King in the Livingston District. When the Planning Commission first discussed the solar farm, there was a recommendation made by the Chairman of the Planning Commission that perhaps some citizens could be uh, encouraged to uh, contribute to the discussion. Everything that has happened since would suggest to me, and I hope to you, that there are some very serious issues that the planning commission, the planning staff, and you, the board of supervisors, simply do not have the experience to deal with. In other words, we're dealing with new territory, new issues. This is not another shopping center. This is not another subdivision. This is a several hundred million dollar project in order of magnitude greater than anything that has ever been done in the county. I see that the uh, staff has uh, given a response to the request for a citizen committee and they have three cons. Limited number of citizens formulating recommendations in an official capacity. First of all, there are only a few hundred maybe a thousand citizens out of the 130,000 in the county who are directly affected by the solar farm. And that limited number of a thousand, I think you can get a half a dozen people, some of whom have spoken tonight. And by the way, I am not volunteering for this committee. Um, there are people who with expertise that the county does not have, and you can either get that expertise by hiring a consulting firm or you can use what we have um, available. Second objection was the duplication of efforts being undertaken by staff and the Planning Commission. I've heard discussions tonight and in the other meetings on subjects that I cannot conceive that the Planning Commission or the Planning staff has any experience in. It is the fact that this is totally different from anything that you've ever dealt with in the past that suggests that you do need some new eye and new ears and new questions raised. Finally, strain on staff resources to support a new committee. If you don't take advantage of the people that we have here, then what kind of a strain is there going to be on the staff if they're going to do the work that they have to? By the way, I have high regard for uh, the, the Planning Commission staff. I think that Wanda and her staff are doing a fine job. They just don't have any experience in this area. The final reason for having a committee is that if the citizens and the Planning Commission, oh, I'll stop. Irv Boyles, followed by Charles Tuck.
Evening, I'm Irv Boyles. I live at Fawn Lake. Uh, I'm leaving a copy of my uh, talk here with the, for the record. I note that I presented concerns to the supervisors previously about the inadequacy of the county code in regard to dealing with emergencies during the installation, operation, and eventual removal of such a massive solar plant so close to residential and farming areas, sharing a common aquifer, supplying water uh, to wells and springs, feeding Fawn Lake, Lake Wilderness, Lake of the Woods, and an area interlaced with runs and streams that supply drinking water on the way to the Poe Reservoir. Without due diligence as to the environmental impact that can result from inadequate engineering design, system safety provisions, and emergency action planning, the county is vulnerable to catastrophic social and economic impacts. For, an in, for example, emergencies are inevitable with the installation this size due to the breakage of solar panels from lightning strikes, tornado force winds, and other natural phenomena such as large hailstones, any of which can damage or cause the deg degradation to, to the solar panels and release cadmium, a known carcinogen, and other toxic materials into the aquifer, other waterways, into the land itself, and eventually into the lakes and reservoirs. To date, the only proposed emergency action plan to address emergencies is to suppress press wildfires, the section 3.5 of the special use permit application. This is, response, this is irresponsible and further underscores the need for this board to deny the S power applications and to place future applications for solar panel plants in this county on indefinite hold until other policy until clear policies, guidelines, regulations, and emergency action plans are established for their design, installation, environmental protection, operation, maintenance, reliability, and removal. The idea of a citizen committee to help this county in this should be seriously considered. Thank you for your service. Charles Tuck followed by William Stewart. My name is Charles Clifford Tuck, and I reside in the Livingston District. I support the concept of a Citizens Committee, which would offer the Board of Supervisors an additional set of viewpoints respect to the introduction of solar power plants. I heartily endorse what many of my fellow citizens said tonight, favoring the establishment of such a committee. One brief point I would like to make is that the board and county residents as well need to anticipate that other industrial solar plant developers may also consider building solar plants in Spotsylvania for reasons similar to those of the current special use applicant. One can see the possibility that the Berkeley district rural character would be as enticing as the Livingston district for the same reason. So it's important that consideration of the Livingston District Special Use Permit be evaluate, evaluated with the view that future applicants will cite the Livingston District application as a template for their application. In other words, the current review should be deliberate and seek to weigh all the pros and cons without undue haste. Recall the wisdom of the old chestnut, measure twice, Cut once. William Stewart. My name is William Stewart. I'm actually a resident of uh, Stafford, but <clears throat> my wife and I own about 15,000 square feet of commercial real estate in, in uh, Spotsylvania. I'm bringing up the issue of um, the cost of electricity, which affects all of us and commercial as well. And uh, I just want to say that I support the committee and I'll be your first volunteer to uh, join it. I'm a, I have a 
Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. I was in um, power plant design a long time ago after I got out of the Navy. Uh, we're getting told a lot of stuff that's not true. A power plant, a uh, solar plant up here in this latitude with this lousy weather, how much solar energy did we get today? So uh, they get about 15% of the rated capacity. It's just to make, we got, I guess the two richest guys in the world, Bill Gates and um, Jeff Bezos, they're all for this and make them feel good about themselves that they're getting electricity, uh, solar electricity to put in their <coughs> um, data farms, which, um, by the way, don't provide any jobs. Anyway, that's it. I'm make it quick. I volunteer. And, and um, I don't know if you can see this. The, um, it, the Germans finally wised up. They, they went all in for solar power. And as recently as three years ago, in 2012, they were building over 7,000 megawatt capacity a year. It just fell off a cliff. They did 600 last year because it doesn't work. It makes electricity that's three or four times what we pay for to Dominion or Rappahannock Electric. That's it. There are no other citizens that are signed up to speak. Is there anybody that did not sign up that wishes to speak now? My name is Michael O'Beer, 11201 Chancellor Meadows Lane. Uh, Spotsylvania County's comprehensive plan guide develops activities to promote, preserve the practice of sa uh, health, safety, and general welfare of its citizens and not to sway from basic visions and goals. The code states that the per purpose is to coordinate with present and future needs and resources best promote health, safety, morals, order, and general welfare of an inhabitants, including the elderly and the disabled. At Amendment 1, I would ask for a 362-foot buffer from any residents to include 8 to 10-foot high earth berms with 6 or 7-foot tall trees planted in staggered positions with grass and shrubs before the facility fences. The buffer should be in place before grading construction is started so not to be a negative impact on homeowners. I would invite all members to the property of uh, on Chancellor Meadows Lane to take a look and see what's going on there. Thank you. Is there anybody else that did not sign up that wishes to speak at this time? Seeing none, close public, public presentations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This brings us to the approval of the board's consent agenda. May I have the floor computer, please? Consent agenda is as follows. Item one is the approval of minutes for the March 27th, 29th, and April 3rd, 2018 board meetings. Second is the appointment of Chairman Greg Benton to the Fredericksburg Metropolitan Planning Organization, FAMPO, as an alternate member for a term that expires January 1, uh, January 8th of 2019. And item three is the appointment of Loretta Daniels to the Transportation Committee for the Salem District for a term that expires April 24th of 2019. Item four is the approval of a proclamation for Spotsylvania Business Appreciation Week, which will be May 7th to 11th of 2018. <coughs> item five is to approve proposed bylaws changes regarding ethics complaints and there is the additional item six, a budget amendment and appropriation for two months of the mall satellite library operation and capital cost in this FY 2018. Does any board member wish to pull any of the uh, consent agenda items? Mr. Skinner, did you want six pulled? The library? Can we get a, uh, a motion to approve one through five? So moved. Mr. Dr. Trampy, a uh, motion to approve one through five of the consent agenda. Mr. Yakubowski? Aye. Mr. McLaughlin? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Skinner? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Dr. Trampy? Aye. Chair, aye. 
<coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Mr. Kennedy. Number Sorry. six, I really just had one question. That was for the county administrator. We talked earlier. Do we know when the uh, when the uh, completion, those the additional two months that we're giving them for um, labor, I guess, or for people that's going to be working in there, do we know when it said possibly early May? Do we know that for sure? I talked to Ms. Hutzel again today at... Uh, at the library, we don't have a firm plan yet for an opening date. There is a need for them to get in and do work in the space and for the capital money to be expended so there's both staff and capital <laughs> investment to be made. And we don't have a uh, firm date for opening as yet uh, for the library space. The uh, <coughs> budget adjustment that's before you would move the capital investment, $18,000 and some, from next year or after July 1st to the current fiscal year so they could start expending that money and also uh, take two months worth of operating expense from the contingency um, in order to give them money to pay staff to do work. And the way this would be done to transition to the opening, since we don't have a hard date, was that w if, this, if the board should approve this budget uh, amendment, we would then uh, have the library bill against the budget amendment um, and any up to the extent of the 30 some thousand dollars of operating expense and anything that's not uh, billed from FY18 would fall to the fund balance again. So it's there for use um, to the extent that they can use it to get open uh, as soon as possible. The horizon for opening um, is in the two to three month uh, window and again we'll come back with a firm date for the opening and a ceremony as soon as that's identified. Mr. Chair. Mr. Ross. Yeah, I spoke with them last Friday, Gary, and if they start now, which they can't do unless we do this, that they, they mentioned July being the open, but if they wait till the appropriation comes on July 1, it would be two months after that because they can't actually start doing any purchasing or any of those things without the appropriation, if that makes sense. Thank you. Motion to approve. Right, motion to approve number six by Mr. Skinner. Mr. Yakadowski. Aye. Mr. McLaughlin. Aye. Mr. Ross. Aye. Mr. Skinner. Aye. Mr. Marshall. Aye. Dr. Trampy. Aye. Chairs, aye. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That brings us to board <coughs> reports, please. Uh, Mr. Skinner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> You know, I want to thank everybody for coming out here tonight. Um, I know you've done this over and over and over, and I just want to speak for myself in this case, and that I see this as one of the biggest projects that Spotsylvania will undertake, has ever undertaken, and probably will ever undertake. And um, there are so many concerns out there that I have myself, and I will not be forced to make a decision with all those concerns being answered are an alternative to those concerns. And uh, I do appreciate it. And I think we have a lot of talented people out there and, and we should use them. I'm not sure exactly how to use them yet, to be honest with you. But uh, for me personally, I will not be forced into making any rush. If they try to force me, then, uh, you know, I, I can't support something that I don't have all the facts on, guys. And that's the bottom line for me. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Marshall, nothing. order please. Dr. Tramp, nothing at this time. <clears throat> Mr. Ross, nothing to report. Mr. McLaughlin. Hey, Mr. Chair, one, one thing. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I was wondering if you could have the uh, either the chairman of the school board or the superintendent maybe come back at the next meeting and explain. I got into uh, about the additional revenues that they seem to have generated last week. Uh, I got in a few phone calls about an additional $800,000, $900,000 worth of funds that they found or came out of their budget to pay additional salary increases. I'd just like to know exactly, because that didn't come out in the budget discussions with the superintendent last uh, week and a half ago. So if we could have them come back and explain where those revenues came from, I'd appreciate that. Thanks. Mr. Yakimuski. Uh, nothing. All right, I'll just say, um, just make clear on the solar farm portion myself. Uh, I think I've been uh, accused of s supporting this. I do not support it. I don't not support it. Um, it's too. I don't have enough information to make a 
uh, knowledgeable, informed decision on this. So I wanted to make it clear on that. And for the Fawn Lake folks that are still here, I am having a meeting at um, on May 7th at 6.30 at Fawn Lake for the Fawn Lake folks. Um, so if you're interested, it's going to be at the uh, Country Club. Um, so uh, I'll be there to... <laughs> try to answer as much as many questions I, as I can. Uh, as far as the uh, budget and with the schools, <clears throat> um, I know some are happy, some aren't happy. Um, I tried to make the best decision I could for the budget and for our, uh, the resources that we need uh, overall for the county. Um, I am going to continue to be as active as I can with the schools and visiting as often as I possibly can. Um, this uh, just to, I guess, to, to put forth the efforts to continue to learn and educate myself on, on the needs of all county uh, entities and uh, what you, the taxpayers, support. And uh, for those that have continued to support me and uh, express, uh, I guess, relative thanks for what I'm, I'm doing, I appreciate it. Mr. Taylor. So, Mr. Chairman, that brings us to the public hearing on Special Use Permit 18-0004. This is Zone Baptist Church in the Chancellor District. Kimberly, okay, the floor is you, and I guess we'll open up the, uh, the SUP 18-0004 public hearing. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a request for special use permit approval to allow a private school to operate in the existing Zoan Baptist Church facility. The church property totals approximately seven acres and is currently zoned residential one. An SUP is required to allow a private school to operate on R1 property. Uh, there is a school currently operating in the facility known as Summit Academy. This is um, the subject of a pending notice of violation and all action has been stayed um, uh, and put on hold pending the outcome of the special use permit approval before you tonight. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on April 4th and voted 5-0 to zero to recommend approval with conditions, and staff recommends the board adopt the resolution of approval with the recommended conditions. Here's an aerial map with the church property outlined in red. Properties located on the south uh, side of Plank Road here. Uh, across from the Harrison Crossing Shopping Center, Riverbend High School, of course, is right here to the north. And then to the south here is the Royal Oaks subdivision. This is the existing zoning map of the area. The church property is zoned residential one. There is a bit of uh, residential zoned property surrounding it, but also office and commercial. This is a recent photograph taken of the property. This is taken from their eastern um, access point looking west down Plank Road. As mentioned, Summit Academy is the school currently operating in the facility. Their current student enrollment is 30 students, grades 9 through 11. In the fall of 2018, they expect to have a full curriculum coverage of grades 9 through 12 with an enrollment of 50 students or less. The school classrooms are located within the youth wing in this portion of the building right here. And the school hours are Monday through Friday, 8.15 to 3.04 during the months of August and uh, early June. Student, students either drive to the facility or are dropped off by their parents. Uh, there's no bus or transportation services offered and the school is able to utilize the existing parking for the church. It's adequate for both uses since they operate at different times. The applicant anticipates the mass maximum student capacity in the church facility as is to be approximately 120 students. So staff assumed that maximum of 120 students in order to analyze the proposal's impact on traffic. Based on the ITE trip generation manual, at maximum capacity at the 120 students, the school would generate approximately 298 daily trips with 97 in the AM peak and 70 in the PM peak. The church site currently has two access points on Plank Road. This is their main entrance. Um, they have full movement here at the crossover. This is the second point of um, access here to the east. 
BDOT did review this proposal. These two points of access do not meet current standards with respect to design and spacing. And they, of course, um, recommended that these entrance points be improved as conditioned as part of this special use. The county's traffic engineer uh, weighed BDOT's recommendations against the current traffic conditions and level of service along Plank Road. Currently, for this segment of Plank, um, between Big Bend Boulevard and Harrison Crossing, it operates at a level of service C, which is an acceptable level and it's consistent with the comprehensive plan. The main western entrance here into the site, it's located 700 feet from Big Bend Boulevard and 1,600 feet from Harrison Crossing. Um, this is a, a decent distance between each. Those are both signalized intersections, so they create a delay to allow safe um, uh, exits from the site. The main entrance is also 40 feet wide, which does meet uh, commercial entrance standards. And as you can see, since there's no crossover here, this is in eastern entrance operates as a right in, right out. Also, this segment of Plank Road has um, averaged 3.7 crashes per year. That's not considered a high crash location. Given the limited amount of traffic generated by the school, the existing level of service, the low crash date, uh, data that we had, the county is not recommending any changes to the site access points at this time. Key findings identified in favor include that the school will operate within the existing facility. It complements the intent of the institutional land use designation and also that of the employment center and commercials which are located nearby. There are no proposed changes to the site or the building. The use will be contained within the existing facility and there's minimal impacts to the transportation network. And findings against, of course, are that the existing entrances don't meet VDOT standards. Given that the private school will operate in the current facility, there's no concerns with the use um, as is. While the existing access points do not meet current standards, the use will generate a limited amount of traffic and it will not degrade the level of service for Plank Road. However, staff's position is based on the school operating in the existing facility with the capacity allowed, which is the 120 students. Should the student enrollment um, increase, then the special use permit should certainly be reassessed and those entrances be looked at again. Staff is recommending the board adopt the resolution of approval with the following conditions, that the maximum allowable number of students shall be 120, that any increase would require an amendment to the special use permit, and also that all building and fire code requirements must be adhered to as the student enrollment increases within that maximum allowable number. That concludes my presentation. The applicants are here tonight. They don't have a presentation, but they're happy to answer any questions you may have, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions from the board? Uh, Kim, I guess, I guess, so we're going, basically we're going against the VDOT recommendation for the enhanced entrances. Um, At this time, yes, sir. What is, the, what is the maximum capacity for that building right now? It would be 120 students. So they'd have to add on anyway to do beyond 120. Yes, sir. I'm concerned that we're going, number one, that we're going against <coughs> a VDOT recommendation. It seems like when we do, we, we end up, I don't know the right words, but uh, being affected by it at later times. Um, and if we're going to make it 120 uh, <coughs> capacity, I mean, they, they'd have to build onto the building before they could, I mean, expand before they'd ha even have to make the entrance. Mr. Chair, I have a question real quick. Yeah, Ms. Ms. I assume the <coughs> church has more than 120 parishioners. Yes, sir. Does the church itself not meet VDOT standards? The, the, the entrances as they are today do not meet current standards. Right, so we're not making the church improve the entrances for weekly services or so why would we make I, I guess that there's no if we're not gonna make the church do it I don't know that we'd make the school do it it's just it's probably Monday through Friday and the probably largest traffic's on Sunday I'm sure we could ask the the, the pastor that so I, I don't think if we're not making the church you know fix it the school's probably less impact than the Sunday services any other comments Mr. Chair oh Mr. Ross sorry. so this is zone residential correct yes sir but it doesn't there's no 
access to residential areas behind the church, correct? No, sir. So in, I mean, right across the street is the Home Depot, which is commercial. And so really, I think the point here is, you know, we've been, th we've been through this. There's a school there. Uh, it, in effect, if you look at the area, it should almost be zoned commercial, which if it was, there'd be no need for this public hearing, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions? I'm, I'm sorry, what I meant by that, there'd be no need for the public hearing. The school could be there if it was zoned commercial. It would be a by right use. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> open up uh, public comments in reference to the uh, public, this open up the public hearing for comments from the public for SUP 18 004 Zoan Baptist Church. This is strictly for the Zoan. Baptist Church uh, special use permit. Do we have anybody signed up? No, sir. Is there anybody that did not sign up that wishes to speak in reference to this special use permit? And did the applicant wish to speak? Only if there's questions. Hi, I'm Pastor Jesse Booth, uh, Zoan Baptist, and all I would like to say is that the school has been operating. Uh, there has been no issues, and uh, the school uh, capacity is certainly far, far less than what we have on uh, Sunday vacation Bible schools, other events that we've had there in the facility, and uh, there's just absolutely been no problems whatsoever. So I respectfully ask that uh, you approve this so the school will be able to continue in the facility. We can continue to minister to the community. Thank you. I'm going to close the public uh, comments since nobody approached. And we're going to close this public hearing. Mr. Chair. Mr. McLaughlin. Motion to approve. Motion to approve this uh, Special use permit by Mr. McLaughlin. With, let me just clarify, motion to approve with the recommended conditions put forth by the staff. You got that, Amy? <laughs> Mr. Yakubowski? Aye. Mr. McLaughlin? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Skinner? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Dr. Trampy? Aye. Chair, aye. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Chairman, is a presentation concerning a resolution to increase the county's rabies vaccination fee at rabies clinics from $6 to $10 per vaccine. Um, this is to cover our cost. Rabies vaccines have been at $6 for approximately 10 years. Good evening, I'll be brief and answer any questions that you may have. <clears throat> we're we're looking to increase the fees uh, for the rabies clinic. Um, it's not to make money; it's just to cover our costs. That's all we're looking to do. Um, we want this to be effective. Hopefully, uh, the fall clinic. And the reason we're going proposing for the fall clinic is we already had to start uh, advertising and selling for our uh, spring clinic. Plus, it gives our citizens time, if this is approved, to uh, be ready for that, that change. Um, the only other thing I'll say is uh, that the surrounding jurisdictions are from $8 to $10. So we're, we're way under that. And all we're asking to do is just recover our costs. And I'll answer any questions you have. Any questions from the board? I do. Mr. Skinner? What is the uh, cost for a civilian veterinarian? Do you have any idea what they charge? It depends. Most veterinarians are going to charge an office visit, which could be 30 or more dollars or something like that. So it's still a deal for our citizens. And I don't know if you've had the pleasure of coming to our rabies clinics. We have two a year. And the way we do it, the, the citizens really appreciate it, uh, just the convenience. They don't even have to leave their vehicle. We do pre-registration where they come up front, uh, we give them their paperwork, they ride around in the back, the vet and my staff is back there and they vaccinate all the animals from the vehicle. So um, I hardly ever get any complaints on the clinic and they thank us for our, 
for our service. We're only required to do one uh, every uh, two years, but uh, for as long as I've been here, we've, we've done two a year, and you can see by the numbers, we, they're always well, well attended, which is very important to have the rabies shots, and they get the county license usually while they're at it too. So. Mr. Marshall. Mr. Chairman, I, just to interject, Gary, with a uh, big question on that, even if you don't pay the office visit uh, to go to a private veterinarian, it's anywhere between 12 and $20 an animal. So tack that on to an office visit, it can be fairly costly. Which At $10, this would still be a bargain for a citizen. Yes. Mr. Chair. Mr. I was going to say that I, I use the service all the time, uh, three cats, two dogs. And you, <laughs> the key is you can get your licenses, and if you try to – wrangle a cat to get a shot. It's a great opportunity when they come to your car and, and take care of it. Uh, so, um, I mean, again, I'm going to support this. And uh, if there are no other comments, I'll motion to approve. Motion to approve this. Uh, Mr. Yakubowski? Aye. Mr. McLaughlin? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Skinner? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Dr. Trampy? Aye. Chair's aye. And will I just thank you and the Sheriff's Office for what you all do. That is a great service, and I hope you can continue doing it uh, twice a year. Uh, every year for you to come. Well, I have no plans to change. It's been working good now. Like I said, it's well received, so we'll keep doing it. All right. Well, great service to our citizens. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Chairman, I ask Mr. Cole to address the Citizen Committee on Alternative Energy pros and cons, and he's been working with the planning department to assemble some um, discussion and consideration items. Have the four floor computer, please. Get this right. All right. Uh, this is just to to go over. Uh, I know uh, it had been requested, and and you know several citizens have asked about establishing a, uh, a citizens uh, committee on alternative energy uh, you know obviously this is uh, created with uh, was initiated by concerns about the uh, the s power solar uh, application um, and certainly the board may establish a committee by resolution to advise the the board and the planning commission on any particular subject hey mr cole yep. you mind getting that microphone a little okay. closer i know there's some couple people there all right there you go that's better all right the, the board may establish a, a, a committee advisory committee by resolution to advise the board or the planning commission on any particular subject uh, the specifics of the committee would need to be worked out and and uh, and defined including its scope authority uh, membership uh, term of appointments meeting schedules uh, the committee would need to follow uh, bylaws, so you'd have to establish bylaws, and would be subject to the Freedom of Information Act uh, related to uh, its meetings. It would have to hold open meetings and so forth. Uh, and to facilitate these meetings, uh, staff would be, need to be assigned to support the committee. There are a number of uh, pros and cons uh, to the, uh, the committee. Uh, you know, to focus on a particular topic. Uh, the committee provides an additional forum or avenue for citizen input, and the committee is an official way to leverage any citizen expertise on technical topics. Uh, other considerations are that the committee is composed of a, of a limited number of people to make recommendations. Uh, other members of the community may feel that their opinions are not given the same uh, consideration as those who, who did get appointed to the committee. A committee would be providing recommendations to the board and, and also the planning commission uh, and uh, you know, could uh, duplicate efforts that planning staff is already undertaking. Uh, as far as analysis functions by the staff and getting, uh, getting input, and, and technical expertise. Um, and as I said before, a new committee would require staff resources 
uh, uh, for, and it would probably come out of the planning department, uh, you know, given uh, the, the subject matter involved. Uh, you know, uh, citizen involvement and interest in, in uh, any zoning case, especially large-scale zoning cases or special use uh, permit applications is expected and welcome. Uh, the process uh, that is designed to encourage involvement, sharing ideas, suggestions, which adds to the value of the process. Uh, planning staff have benefited in the past from a significant amount of information, studies, and suggestions provided by interested citizens. You know, staff is certainly reviewing uh, all the information provided. Uh, the county has uh, experienced several or has gone through several controversial projects in the past, and it is common for, uh, you know, kind of grassroots, spontaneous, uh, unofficial citizen committees to spring up uh, when these projects are, are proposed. And uh, certainly whether you authorize a, uh, a uh, official advisory committee or not, uh, that would not stop a citizens group from forming their own committee and coming to address the board and provide input to the board and staff as well. Uh, w one other concern is that whenever you're in a, uh, a case, and, and county attorney could probably comment on this better than I can, uh, you know, you uh, w once an application is made, if you start treating that application different than you have other applications in the in the uh, in the past uh, you know it, it could uh, provide uh, legal grounds for a challenge to a decision uh, should you deny that that permit so that is something else to I think just keep in the uh, back of your mind is uh, why did it, you know you treat this application differently than you have other applications in the past as far as forming a special citizens committee to, to review this. But that's really all I have. It's certainly, like I said, within your scope and authority to establish an advisory committee if you choose to do so. And, uh, and we'll certainly uh, do what we can to make it to work and, and to be productive. But, uh, you know, uh, the, these uh, advisory committees do take staff time and resources to support them. Mr. Skinner, Mark, can you tell us, um, you, you know, the application's been submitted, I guess. Yeah. Can you give us a timeline? Because, you know, I've had so many people say, hey, you're going to vote in this next month. Yeah. I no. doubt that very seriously. I think the public needs to know, number one, what is the timeline for this project? Okay. Yeah. And um, I'm going to, I've got one other question for you. You can answer that one sure. first. I'll come back to the, the second. The uh, application was submitted, uh, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the uh, By law, we have a, a basically a year before you all have to act on it, and that year could be extended uh, by mutual agreement, uh, you know, if needed. Uh, staff has started their technical review of the proposal uh, of the application. Uh, there no doubt will be questions uh, and concerns raised by staff. Those questions and concerns will be forwarded to the applicant for them to answer and provide additional information. Uh, uh, a, a application this size and this scope, I, I would anticipate, is going to require several months of staff time to review at, at a minimum. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's going to be several months before it would even go to the planning commission at, at the earliest. Uh, you know, th this is not, uh, as the citizens have pointed out, this is not a routine, uh, you know, housing development or anything like that. Uh, I am in, in uh, discussing with staff the potential of... Uh, trying to find a consultant who has expertise in these solar projects. Uh, there's not a lot of them around right now because there hasn't been a whole lot of solar projects in Virginia. But we're, I mean, you know, we are discussing that and, you know, it's certainly something I think, uh, you know, we would like to do is get some outside uh, expertise uh, because our, our 
you know, quite honestly, our staff are not solar experts. Then the, the other question is the State Corporation Commission. Yes. Could you sort of tell them what role they play in all of this, please? They, they uh, provide a, uh, a uh, you know, uh, a, the State Corporation Commission is, is set up to re uh, basically regulate and oversee uh, public utilities, uh, things like that. And since this is kind of a quasi-public utility or actually will be in providing input to a, a public utility, uh, there is an application pending before the SCC regarding this project for them to operate uh, a utility. Uh, that, it, you know, is independent and separate from your all's decision. You know, the SCC could approve their application and say, yeah, you guys are good to operate in, in Virginia. Uh, and you, go, you all, you know, what could be perfectly within your rights to say, that's all well and good, but this is not the correct place for the, such a project. So uh, it's really two separate uh, routes or applications. Uh, and I, I would just like to also add that uh, uh, I do not believe you all have a, a, the authority to just summarily dismiss anybody's application. Everybody. Uh, you know, has a right to due process, if you will, and our due process is a technical review by the planning department. Then it will go to, uh, you know, the staff will make a recommendation. It will go to the planning commission, and then the planning commission will hold hearings on it and then provide a recommendation to you all before you hold hearings on it. So, you, it, you know, you don't really have the th authority, unless you want to get into an expensive legal case, to just sum summarily dismiss a, uh, uh, an applicant's uh, request for a permit. Uh, also, I don't believe you all have the authority to summarily say we're not going to allow any solar projects within the county. Uh, so every application and every case needs to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis and on the merits of the uh, of the application and the proposal uh, and uh, you know that's what uh, I, I can tell you staff will do okay. and my final question will be about the uh, uh, a couple points were made up here is that uh, uh, you have a lot of uh, I think in uh, people that know about solar panels and the soil and everything else out, out in our community the question is, how does your staff, Wanda and your staff, you know, because we are going to have, I'm going to have an awful lot of questions for you, obviously the concerns that we, we know that are out there, and um, how, how would you all look upon it as far as having people that have the experience behind this, not necessarily being on the commission, but um, would you go to them? Would you ask for the input? Uh, absolutely. Uh, like, like I said, we're currently uh, trying to see if there's any, uh, you know, subject matter experts out there that we may be able to uh, establish a co consulting relationship with to answer our specific technical questions regarding the project. A lot of concerns have been raised, and we're doing our best to try to investigate those concerns. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, but, but like, I, like I said before, we don't have a solar engineer on staff. Uh, so uh, we are uh, in the process of uh, trying to reach out and see if there's uh, somebody that we might be able to get under contract as a consultant to provide us some technical expertise on this. Thank you. You know, Mr. Jakubowski. Thank you. Um, the presentation is on a citizen committee and the pros and the cons. Uh, quite honestly, I don't see the need for it. Um, having it uh, sort of under our wing is not necessary, um, especially since the application has been provided. It looks as though we are trying to um, uh, do something different than we have for any other application. Granted, it is different than every other application we've ever had, but every application needs to be treated fairly. and. Um, uh, and upon its merits, uh, there is nothing that stops any uh, group of citizens from getting together, forming a committee, putting together information as a advisory committee to the county and coming here as they have 
and provide that information to us, email us, uh, provide us packets of information as, as they currently do, which I think is, um, is a better course of action to take because quite honestly, if we are going to set up a uh, citizen committee to discuss uh, alternative, alternative energy, we need to have a balanced committee of those that are pro, con, all viewpoints, and it cannot focus on one single application. It needs to take the entire entity of um, uh, alternative energy and, and how that affects the county. And if it gets away from that and delves into uh, dealing simply with the application that has currently been submitted, then I think it should be disbanded because that committee would be off the rails and, and completely inappropriate. So I, I encourage all citizens to get together, if you want to, form your own committee, give us all the information. I read it all. It's all sitting in my bag and, and stack uh, at home also. And um, I go through it all, and I'd be happy to continue doing that. But a formal committee, I think, is, is inappropriate at this time. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. McLaughlin. So I'm going I'm to disagree. Um, I think any opportunity we have to engage our citizenship is a great thing. And one thing that we have in Spotsylvania, being so close to the nation's capital, we have a lot of smart people that work in a lot of different industries across the country. And, and I've said before, I'm a mechanical engineer, but I don't know enough about solar, as was stated before, to make a, you know, a, a really informed decision without a lot of extra input. And if we can get the expertise from our citizens at no cost to the county, what a great opportunity. So again, I'm going to support this, and I, you know, and, and as we develop some more bylaws, whether it's just for this project or multiple projects, I don't think that matters. But I mean, if we set up a special committee, because this is a massive project that has a lot of implications to the county, so I think this is a great opportunity. And uh, you know, whether we appoint one or two citizens, you know, per per supervisor, I think it's a good opportunity. It's a great opportunity. I'm going to support it. Mr. Marshall. Um. As far as the fact of us forming a committee for one specific project, I agree with Mr. Yabaski. I don't see the need for it. Um, we do have avenues for the board to educate themselves on several of the issues that have come up. We have the Tri-County Soil and Water Conservation District. We have a DEQ that can handle some uh, environmental concerns. As far as the prescribed burning and then looking at that, you have the Department of Forestry. There's several state organizations and entities that can provide and educate us if any of the board members are lacking information on certain uh, points that have been made. Um, we've heard a lot of opposition and a lot of citizens that want this committee, but um, in all fairness to the applicant, we've heard nothing from them. Um, I, if the citizens would like to form their own committee and report That's back right. to the board, just like Mr. Yabeski said, I read through everything that's been sent to me, every email, every letter. Um, it's a lot of good points in there. Um, the, especially, especially the last one that we just received. Um, I mean, he even went into the, you know, making earth berms, the size of the trees. I mean, he put a lot of thought into this. Um, but that's just my opinion of it. Um, like I said, I'd like to, uh, the State Corporation Commission, as far as that's concerned, um, I pulled it up. They have the Public Utility uh, Division, and that is basically a, uh, it reads right here, Virginia consumers, are, they're making sure the consumer receives adequate utility services at a just and reasonable rate. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure they have applied to that, but that's more of a uh, to prevent price gouging throughout the state, more so than regulating how you get your energy. Thank you. Well, the chair would say, I, Mr. Yakubowski, I know we don't agree all the time, but on this one, I do agree with you. I don't think there's a need for another committee. It's hard enough for us to keep the committees that we have established and going, and I think it's showing preferential treatment on one uh, group and I think it's gonna subject us to a lawsuit in the end. Uh, we're just asking for trouble for this. Um, Mr. Ross? Oh. Let me ask you, Carl, is that, is that accurate? I, I'm just thinking the more information we can get, the better, and if we have a group of people out there putting their minds together to give us information, there's no, no harm in that. But uh, Sure, um, we haven't looked at that yet. I'm not aware of any um, uh, real issue, legal issue with creating a committee. There's certainly, um, viable uh, other considerations. For example, you know, um, you know, once uh, the precedent is established to, you know, establish a committee of uh, citizens, you know, every, everybody's project, if it's near them, is going to be a, a special project that should also get another committee. So there may be some, some pressure on the board um, to, to have to create a committee for every single one. So that's certainly a consideration. But um, 
as long as, you know, we, we would recommend that, you know, to the extent a, a committee is established, <coughs> um, that obviously it be tasked with a, uh, a neutral review to, to weigh the pros and cons of a project, um, that it not be tasked, you know, somehow to, to, to scuttle it, but, but to just provide, you know, uh, advice and recommendations. Um, so as long as, you know, it was, it was tasked neutrally, um, you know, reflected information uh, and, and advice from everywhere. Um, I, I think generally there wouldn't be any concerns, but again, I haven't, we haven't specifically looked at it, but there would be, again, those pressures again with respect to, hey, you know, you did one for S power, you know, where's my citizens committee? So that's certainly a concern that you all may uh, want to think about. And I understand that. However, I, I mean, what we've heard is this is one of the largest solar panel projects proposed in North America. I think it's fairly unique. It's not like we're having a home development come up uh, of 300 acres or even at 6,000 acres. Uh, so yeah, I, I would say I it is unique. I don't disagree. In the, in, I don't disagree. I would, it'd be very unique in that sense. And I don't think we're going to get pressure for every everything we see, but this is definitely unique to Spotsylvania County. For Mr. Chair, one more. I, I want to point something out, you know, bring something up in what you just said, Carl, is that this is also unique. It's really one of the first significant size solar facilities. It helps us, this committee would help us flush out our ordinances and our future guidance for future future plans. So maybe we wouldn't need a committee for the next one because we answered a lot of the questions up front. And I don't think we'll have those for other, you know, housing developments. Well, we've, we've got historical data on that. We know that. We generally don't need a citizen committee to inform us on those, but a solar facility of this size and help us structure our ordinance, I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, once again, I certainly don't disagree with the uniqueness of it. I just, you know, that certainly doesn't keep people from coming and asking. Just wanted to make you aware, of course. Chair Yakubowski. Mr. Chairman, um, if I might just point out, I've always been advised and thought that we are always supposed to treat every application as a standalone application uniquely and fairly as it goes through the process. Um, even in discussions of this, there are there is talk of setting up a citizens, uh, citizen committee, advisory committee, to uh, advise us on this project, which again is going off the rails. That's my point. We have lots of very smart people who provide lots of um, information that I do not possess. There is nothing that stops them from doing that, and quite honestly, gives them the leeway to go any avenue that they that they so desire. I just don't think that it is the, the right thing to do at this point, since the application has been point, uh, put in, to put together an advisory committee. And uh, the, the question of whether or not there will be other uh, political pressure to put together an advisory committee on, on whatever else it might be. It might not be a housing development. It might be a reservoir. It might be um, you know a new landfill that we put in. It might be whatever comes up we're setting a precedent of reacting to what is coming along. And so I think that what we really need to do is encourage our citizens to do what they have done this evening and they have done for many meetings now, is to come and inform us, send us information, get together, put together information for us, but to have an actual uh, ordained uh, committee from this board, I think is, is the wrong avenue. Mr. Chair. Mr. McClellan. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Mr. Chair, I'd like a discussion on one thing, please. What, what I would like to know, whichever way this comes out, and that is we heard a lot of people here tonight that has some experience and quite knowledgeable in the different areas of what we're looking at today, whether it be the water, the aquifer, or whether the hazardous material. What I would recommend, even whichever way this vote comes out tonight, is that those people that have that experience submit a resume, Mark, to you. And the reason I say that is because then you will have that on file because you just said we're having a hard time finding a consultant. Well, perhaps we can find citizens who are willing to do that, give you a, another avenue to approach. So, I, I, and that may serve the same purpose as a committee. If these people tonight that showed up would submit a resume to you, Mark, if they if that's okay with you. And that way we'll have the knowledge of who in this county and who in the area really can help us with this to find out the answers. So I'd appreciate that. And Mr. Chairman, getting to the, the, the motion, there was no attachment to the agenda item that I have as regards the composition 
even hypothetically, of such a body. And if it, I would like to recommend that if it's the board's determination to move toward the formation of a committee, that given that what we understand now of the calendar of the item, we're not pushed to be in a hurry, could Mr. Cole come back with some recommendations on composition and with some further information for the benefit of the citizens about the full meaning of engagement as a public body under the, under the state law, which is what happens with a county advisory committee. The, the meetings are public. They're required to be noticed, minutes kept, and the, and the, the, rest, of, the rest of the buffet. I just want uh, all involved to understand what they're walking into and also due attention to be paid to the composition of the body as regards uh, fairness or balance um, you know, to the extent that this is an advisory body toward an open inquiry with a pending application, um, one question that hangs in the air in my mind is, or would representatives of S Power be welcome to participate on the committee uh, alongside the citizens who are, have indicated, and I don't doubt that they have knowledge of the subject matter, they also are coincidentally predominantly residents down the, the wind stream uh, and on neighbors of the application. So where is fairness and balance given that we may, um, depending on the outcome of the matter, face then an inquiry judicially into how the matter was handled and what was done? How can we compose such a body in order to ensure fairness and balance for the information of the board and the, and the community as a whole? Another question, Mr. Taylor and, and Mr. Cole, and I guess planning. How soon could one of these be put together? We, we could do it pretty quickly. Like if you all pass this resolution, next meeting I will try to have a kind of a sketch, a recommendation of what the, would, you know, would be a, a, a good composition of, of such a committee. Uh, for you all to discuss and debate at your next meeting if, if you, you so choose. Any other comments? Go ahead. Yeah, just uh, again, uh, to clarify from a legal perspective, um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Taylor and Mr. Cole bring up lots of uh, uh, good policy points, but uh, currently um, there is no resolution to create a committee. I think just to, for clarification, I think uh, the, the motion by Mr. McLaughlin is to give uh, staff direction to go ahead bring back to the board uh, the formation of a committee, a recommended formation, amount of members, mission, et cetera. Well, you know, the motion was to approve the committee, and ideally you would come back with the structure at a later date. Right. But that, you know, by approving the committee today, it gives you really the direction to go ahead and execute that meeting. And it doesn't have to be for a specific project. I mean, it states in the meeting, alternative energy committee. And that's what we're establishing because that's going to set the guidelines for our future projects, whether it's wind or solar or, or whatever it may be. And that's part of what would uh, come back to, to the board is uh, the purposes of the committee, um, the makeup, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. So this is just for alternate energy sources, not uh, the crucible that's in Berkeley District and that we need to form a committee on and not for another Walmart that we need to form a committee on and all this. We're just going to form a committee strictly for alternate energy. Mr. Chair, that was the motion. Okay. Just I'm just for making sure. I'm getting my head wrapped around this since we But you can happy. you can motion for a committee on Walmart if you'd like. But this is just for this <clears throat> committee. Well, alternate energy. All right. I'll start down this way, Mr. Skinner. No. Mr. Marshall? No. Dr. Trappy? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Um, Mr. McLaughlin? Aye. Mr. Yakabowski? No. Chairs, nay. Mr. Chairman, that brings us to closed meeting for the evening. There are several. One second, Mr. Items. Taylor. Mr. Skinner had something. I just want to reiterate what we did say. We have a lot of good people out there, and I wish that they would submit the resume with their knowledge of what we could do to use it and everything. So we could go to them separately, and we could uh, use it uh, on behalf of, of the county. Thank you. 
Sorry about that, Mr. Taylor. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. That, Closed uh, session. Closed session. Yes, sir. We have several items. Carl, you want to read us in? Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. This is your resolution to adjourn and close meeting. Uh, and I would note this has changed from the one that was uh, attached to your agenda. I do have a copy here for uh, Amy for the records. Um, whereas the Spotsylvania County Board of Supervisors desires to adjourn and close meeting for discussion or consideration of the acquisition of real property for a public purpose or the disposition of publicly held real property or discussion an open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body, specifically discussion of real property in the Cortland District, and whereas the Spotsylvania County Board of Supervisors desires to adjourn and close meeting for consultation with legal counsel and briefings by staff members or consultants pertaining to actual or probable litigation, where such consultation or briefing and open meeting would adversely affect the negotiating or litigating posture of the public body, specifically regarding a contractual claim, and whereas the Spotsylvania County Board of Supervisors desires to adjourn and close meeting for consultation with legal counsel employed or retained by a public body regarding specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by such counsel, specifically regarding risk and liability, code enforcement, social services, and matters of planning and zoning, and whereas pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3711-A3-7 and 8, such discussions may occur in closed meeting. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Spotsylvania County Board of Supervisors does hereby authorize discussion of the aforestated matters. Motion by Mr. Skinner. Mr. Yakabowski. Aye. Mr. McLaughlin. Aye. Mr. Ross. Aye. Mr. Skinner. Aye. Mr. Marshall. Aye. Dr. Trampy. Aye. Chair, aye. Turn to open meeting. Whereas the Spotsylvania County Board of Supervisors has convened a closed meeting on this day pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, and whereas Section 2.23712D of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by this board that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law, now therefore be it resolved that the Spotsylvania County Board of Supervisors hereby returns to open meeting and certifies by roll call vote that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act and identified in the motion convened in the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered in the closed meeting. Mr. Skinner, I'm coming your way. Mr. Skinner? Aye. Mr. Marshall? Aye. Dr. Trampy? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. McLaughlin? Aye. Mr. Yakabowski? Aye. Chairs, aye. Mr. Chairman, ask the board to entertain a motion, please, to add to new business uh, for tonight's meeting uh, authorization of the county administrator to execute approval of a lease proposed by Spotsylvania Mall Company uh, to uh, Spotsylvania County for <coughs> approximately 2,075 and 57 one hundredths square feet of space in Spotsylvania Mall, Cortland District, Spotsylvania County, identified as Unit 390 in Spotsylvania Mall. This is for the Spotsylvania Mall. Uh, library site. So moved. I've got a motion from Mr. Ross. Any discussion? Mr. Skinner. Aye. Mr. Marshall. Aye. Dr. Trampy. Aye. Mr. Ross. Aye. Mr. McLaughlin. Aye. Mr. Yakabaski. Aye. Chair, aye. And Amy, please make sure you get a copy of the lease for the record. 
I think we have another, need another motion too, right? So, motion to approve the lease on the library. Is that good? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Motion to approve the lease on the library. Uh, Mr. Skinner. Aye. Mr. Marshall. Aye. Dr. Trampy. Aye. Mr. Ross. Aye. Mr. McLaughlin. Aye. Mr. Kent. I'm Yakabowski. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. <laughs> I know. I was doing so good. Uh, chair's eye. Mr. Ross. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. So uh, based off of Alma Buckley's uh, comments during public commentation or comment time, I would like to make a motion that this board have the commissioner of VDSS, Mr. Duke Storen, review the Buckley's case with Spotsylvania County DSS. I'll start down your way, Chris. Mr. Yakabaski. No. Mr. McLaughlin? Aye. Mr. Ross? Aye. Mr. Skinner? Aye. Um, Mr. Marshall? Aye. Ms. Dr. Trampy? Aye. Chair, aye. Do we have a motion to get out of here? Motion to adjourn? <laughs> Mr. Yakabaski? Oh, all eyes. Aye. Aye. Any nays? Gentlemen. Your information and the public's would note that on May 9th in this chamber at 2 and at 7 p.m. is the uh, State Corporation Commission's hearing on the uh, application of S Power for a certificate of public convenience and necessity. May 9th? May 9th. It's here in this chamber. Right here at 2 and at 7 p.m. And we have. Absolutely. We also have notice out to citizens otherwise on the website and other places. But, uh